Hello and Happy New Year from Moments in the Bible. I'm your host, David Church, and go ahead and grab your Bible or your phone and turn over to Psalm 118. Psalm 118, it's actually one of my favorite Psalms uh, in the entire Bible. I love Psalm 118, it's one of my favorite chapters, if you will, even though it's not really a chapter. Uh, but Psalm 118, and we're going to read verses 6 and 7 to kick off our new year. Psalm 118, verses 6 and 7. The Bible says, The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? The Lord taketh my part with them that help me. Therefore shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. Now this is a really interesting couple of verses. You say, you're only reading two? I'm only reading two. Um, but this is a really interesting couple of verses. I mean, firstly, we have this famous passage, the Lord is on my side, I will not fear. What can man do unto me? The New Testament changes this uh, just a little bit uh, when it quotes this verse and says, I will not fear what men can do unto me. So literally, it doesn't matter. I don't have to be afraid of men because I've got God on my side. Now, that doesn't mean that you're not going to naturally have some fear. Uh, and that's, that, that's normal. That's fine. Again, I've said this many times. Fear in and of itself is not sin. Anxiety is not sin. But the really cool thing is that no matter what happens at the end of the day, no matter if, if the most powerful man in this world is against us, if the president of the United States is against you, if the pastor of your church is against you, if the boss at your job is against you, if your neighbor is against you, it doesn't matter. If you are a born-again believer, the Lord is on your side. What can men do unto you? If we have the Lord in our court, we don't have to worry about it. Now, that's the famous verse, and that's the fun part. But what caught my eye was verse 7. Check this out where it says, The Lord taketh my part with them that help me. See, I think that normally what we do, what I do, is I assume that when God's going to help me, he just helps me. You know, uh, I have a... a, a financial need and so the Lord's going to really help me do the things that I need to do. He's going to give me the extra energy and the wisdom to find the work that's going to get me the extra money, that kind of thing. That's not what this verse is saying. And I'm not saying God can't work that way. Look at what the verse says. Again, verse 7, the Lord taketh my part with them that help me. So let's just stick with the idea of the financial aspect of it. That means that if we're praying this way, the Lord might take a boss and say, hey, you know what? David's been working really well. Let's give him a raise. Let's give him a promotion. The Lord can work that way. It's not always us. How many of us have ever had a need and someone else came and met it for us? Right? I don't have enough groceries. Well, I guess the Lord's just going to provide money on my porch. But the Lord doesn't always do that. Instead, the Lord moves on someone else's heart and says, hey, deliver them a pizza. Boom. By the way, my wife and I love doorbell ditching blessings. It's fun. If you've never done it, you should try this. What you got to do is you, you, you find someone that you want to be a blessing to in some way. Uh, and it's fun to do it with pizza. We like to get like large pizzas. By the way, make sure you find out what people's food allergies are before you try to bless them with food. I'm just telling you, it could be bad if you don't. And uh, so we find out what it is. And then, uh, you know, especially if we know that someone's having a hard time, but even if not, and then we go up and we leave the the uh, food on the porch, we very carefully sneak off. That's always the, the stressor part where we get caught being a blessing because we're trying not to. And then uh, we'll usually leave a card or a note and it's incognito because we don't want to know it was us. And we just say, hey, the Lord put you on our hearts. And uh, then we ring the doorbell and we run for the hills, jump in our car and we tear out of there. And there it is sitting on their porch. And that's always so much fun. Not only do that if you know their home and if it's not in the spring when there are lots of ants and they're crawling around right there on the patio. you got to be smart about it. But I'm just saying, God can sometimes, it doesn't have to be just us. We always are so myopic. God will help me. God's going to give me the strength that I need. For when I am weak, then is he strong. I know. I really, really know. But sometimes the Bible says that the Lord taketh my part with them that help me. With the people that labor with me, with my spouse, with children, uh, uh, um, with, with our co-laborers in the Lord, with our co-workers, with our managers, with other people, with total strangers. Isn't that a cool thought? That it doesn't just have to depend on us, that God can sometimes... I'm telling you, for me, that's a comforting thought, because there have been so many times in my life when I just... <clears throat> I haven't been with it. Spiritually speaking, I'm not abiding. I'm not staying near the Lord. I'm not praying the way that I should. I'm not 
basking in God's presence the way I could. And thank God somebody else is. And then he works on them to be merciful to me. And then the Bible says, therefore shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. Which basically means, hey, I'm going to win. My enemies will not win. I'm going to win. My desire is to win. And sometimes God helps us by helping our allies. Isn't that a neat thought? Because it's not just that the Lord is on my side. I will not fear what men can do unto me. Because you're afraid of one man, one man or one woman. God can take a different man or woman and use them to help us or different men or women. You know what? We just passed the Christmas season and it reminds me of It's a Wonderful Life. And here's Mr. Potter who's trying to come after George Bailey and he's got him cornered. And all of a sudden, who shows up to help George? Everybody else George has helped. Pitching a little bit here, a little bit there. Boom, boom, boom. Giving him everything that he needs. The Lord would help with all those around him. God, in this particular instance, the angels just sent Clarence to help reset his mind thinking. And it's a fictional story. I understand. But the point still remains. It's a good example. That sometimes God helps us by helping those around us to say, hey, that person needs to help you. And by the way, maybe we're out there and we're saying, you know, the Lord is really impressing on my heart that they need something. They need a kind word. They need some groceries. They need something. Listen to that voice. Because someday it might be you in that situation and you're going to want someone else to do that. And maybe the Lord is working in you to be the help that they need in their lives. Um, also want to let you know, just a reminder, that when we took last week off for a recording, we are going to be back again on Monday with Love Faith Tacos. This week's episode of Love Faith Tacos will be on help with hurt during the holiday season. And you say, wow, the holiday season is not really truly over. I mean, it is. We've just passed them all. But a lot of that can last on. So make sure you tune in to your favorite podcasting service. We're available on all the major podcasts there uh, so that you can hear about getting help with hurt during the holidays. Or maybe it's something you can help with someone else. And for here on Moments in the Bible, we're so happy you chose to join us once again here in the new year. We'll see you next week. Please remember to subscribe if you've not done so yet. We'll see you next time.